Uh, the HPX, the OpenVMS, and the non-stop architecture is something HP already owns for quite some time. And uh, some of the things I have, and there is uh, some of you that might have been running on Itanium. Do I have any Itanium customers here? Anyone running Itanium? One, two? So then you probably are all familiar with the Superdome architecture from HP. So that same functionality that they have in there, they're bringing that down to the, the what's called the Dragon Links platform. And I have some more slides on that later how it looks like. But that's, that's the same level of capabilities are bringing, they're bringing to the x86 world now. Uh, other things like the partitioning, they're still working on that. And this is something new, the HP service card. Uh, you might have heard of Red Hat clustering, or some of you might have already deployed Red Hat clustering. If you want Red Hat clustering on steroids, you need to look at HP service card. And the nice thing is, HP is also working together with Red Hat to uh, develop this service card, and the first deployments of service card are all on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So you're pretty much guaranteed if you, you run Red Hat Linux and you want to have this high level of capabilities, uh, that service cards will be available for you uh, in the near future. It's actually already released, so it's, I have no idea how it's currently being sold, but primarily I, you probably need to talk to your HP uh, sales folks and they can get you access to it. So what is the service card? So service card is, like I said, it's, it's clustering on steroids. Uh, we have, these are the different clustering solutions that you might have heard of already. What HP service card is, it can cluster at multiple levels. Very normal, if you cluster, you have one system standing next to the other one. With HP service card, you can have the systems separated by buildings, continents, or even completely different locations from one end of the world to the other end of the world, and it can still function seamlessly as one single cluster. Um, so what are the things are they bringing to the, to the x86 world? Service card high availability, what we said already. The services, they also develop their service portfolio for mission critical capabilities there. So you're not only getting a platform that's mission critical, a mission critical capable, but you also get a service from HP there. So if there is a, a hardware failure, HP can come on site and quickly replace or fix whatever is failing. Uh, the full tolerance in fabrics, so things like I.O. fabrics, uh, network fabrics, uh, that's also the full tolerance and design for that, they also provide to the x86 platform. And also they provide the virtualization functionality to make virtualization mission critical as well. And they all bring it to x86. Well, I already talked a little bit about the history that HP has with service card. And here you see a short roadmap of, of what they have uh, made available when. And you can see that it's really something that's, well, high availability has been in, in the blood of HP for a long, long time. Back in 99. 1990, so they already started with it, and, and now you see that service cards coming to Linux, and you get the same kind of capabilities that they've got a lot of these years, and we can have it now on x86 architecture. These are the systems they have uh, right now for uh, for this high availability. The high links, that's the high end, uh, the zero range, the general titanium superdomes. These are the code names for the different chassis. And the nice thing is they have they share an awful lot of the features. It also has to do with the fact that, uh, for instance, the Itanium uh, system interface, the QPI bus, is something that we have architect similar on the Itanium and the Xeon system. So the components on the same on the main board can remain the same, and you, still you can run a different architecture on top of it. So in short, what do you need to basically deploy a mission critical system? Of course, you need a, a very decent Xeon processor. Uh, these are the capabilities that are currently in the E7 platforms, and like I said, more of them are coming. Things I didn't address as PCI uh, fail failures and so on, it's, it's very similar to what you have in the QPI buses. It's also something we can detect and recover from. Uh, things like physical CPU hot add and remove, uh, memory hot add and remove. Um, it's, it's all in, in that built into that same E7. So when you buy an E7, it's not like you said, okay, you know, it's just the same thing, maybe a little bit bigger uh, CPU than E5 series. This is really geared to be mission critical in the sense that it's where you pay a little bit extra for it for this processor. And of course, uh, HP is not the only one uh, using these processors. Uh, things like Oracle, uh, you might have heard about the Exadata. I, I doubt that many of you have paid a bought one. Does anyone have an Exadata system in there? One, wow. <laughs> wow, that's a very that's the rich customer probably here. <laughs> so red hat salespeople. <laughs> now these are highly expensive systems, and the nice thing is, although Oracle bought Sun and is now selling Sparks systems or Spark CPUs, they still decided to go for the Xeon E7 in this Exadata cluster. So it's all based on Intel Xeon architecture. 
So it gives you also something to think about on how solid this mission critical architecture really is. Uh, also, SAP HANA, well, I've already showed you a demo. This is a short uh, well, graph of uh, what, what kind of a performance improvement they saw by going from a regular system to an, an e memory database. And also, the IBM DB2 system <coughs> is also capable of using the mission critical architecture features. <coughs> okay, we've talked about the CPU, we've talked about the systems. Of course, you need a very decent OS. And well, if you ask me, you know, I need to be politically correct. You know, almost any kind of uh, new OS can run mission critical features. But in my experience, the best reliability features you always see on, on the Red Hat OS because basically most of the mission critical features have been implemented in there. And as such, you can get a very high degree of mission criticality in your systems if you're using Red Hat Enterprise 6. And with Red Hat Enterprise 7 on the radar screen, you'll probably see a lot more uh, coming in that's uh, available. And you see a lot more uptime on that Red Hat Enterprise 7. With that, uh, I'd like to close. I have a few more slides, a few short ones. I'd like to open the floor first if there are any questions on what I showed because I realized it was kind of quick. Does anyone have any questions regarding what you just saw? No? Great. So, if you want to know more, and you'll probably all get a copy of this slide deck uh, electronically on paper. I haven't really talked to the Reddit folks yet, but I'm not sure I'll make this available. You see some links, we'll also do the demonstration videos if you want to convince your boss to say, okay, well, look at what you can do with a mission critical system. Uh, you can find links to the YouTube videos there. Uh, you find different white papers from Red Hat and Intel requiring mission criticality. And one thing I'd like to leave you with is, well, you saw this now on mission critically, but be very careful if you think that you have an Intel Zeal system. It doesn't mean that by definition all Zeal systems are mission critical. There are some dependencies that you need to be aware of. First of all, it needs to be a ZLD7 system, and you also need to actually well, work, work with your OEM or your systems vendor and ask them what kind of mission critical features they implemented. Because it is really a cooperation between not only the CPU, the system architecture, but also what did they do in their firmware. Some people basically say, might have decided to, okay, well, we make the system or this, the platform mission critical capable, but uh, we basically leave the firmware out, and if someone wants that mission criticality, we add an extra price tag to that. So make sure that you talk to your vendor, saying, I want to use the system for a mission critical environment. Can you turn this on, or what do I require to turn it on? And with that, um, I complete my presentation. I think there are some break now, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, they have an hour break. A little bit earlier. Are there any further questions? Or? No? Okay, and I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.